my name is Alex and welcome to the CAD Spec YouTube channel. Today we'll be discussing how to migrate from SolidWorks to Fusion and just how easy that process is. SolidWorks users out there, please lower your pitchforks and unsharpen your knives. I'm not here to bash your software. I'm actually an ex-SolidWorks user, I've used it in the past. This is no way a video where I'm going to rip SolidWorks. It's more just about we've seen a trend in the industry. People are moving from that software to Fusion. So we want to cover just how easy it is to do that. The first thing we would like to talk about is, you know, what are the differences between the two softwares? Number one is really the, the elephant in the room price. With something like SolidWorks, you're probably going to have to commit to quite a large upfront investment. Whilst as Fusion, you've got a really flexible subscription option, whether it's a one year subscription or a three year subscription. You can also customize your license with a number of different extensions based on what you're actually wanting to do in the software. So you have the base product of Fusion, but also extensions like nesting and fabrication, machining extensions even for five axis cam machining. It's very customizable and very flexible to suit your requirement. Another really important difference between Fusion and SolidWorks is the interoperable interface and environment. So with a product like Fusion, you've got that interoperability with the wider Autodesk portfolio. You can readily take CAD models from any other CAD system virtually into Fusion and, and work with this. You can also easily transport and move data from Fusion to Inventor, to 3DS, to any other Autodesk platform product really. That's probably something you haven't got with a product like SolidWorks. Another key differentiator between Fusion and SolidWorks is that with Fusion, data and collaboration are at the center of the platform. Straight out of the box, you're going to get basic product data management tools in that you can share designs seamlessly with your internal stakeholders. You can comment and add feedback to people. You can also share these designs externally as well using the Autodesk Cloud services. Um, if you're a bit worried about using a cloud product with security issues, there's no need to have that worry. Autodesk have locked this down absolutely and it is a very, very safe platform to share designs and work with. I have touched on this briefly, but another key differentiator is that with Fusion, you've got that customizable extension option. So you've got the base product Fusion, which is pretty much the like for like with the, the SolidWorks package. You've then also got the extensions that give you additional capabilities. If you wanna find out what those additional add-ons are, check the video over here and that'll tell you everything you need to know. Now, let's get on how to migrate from SolidWorks to Fusion. Again, sounds a bit of a complex operation as it can be with the CAD systems, it's really not, and that's what this video is all about. So, first step is, you're gonna to want to get yourself a copy of Fusion. Very, very easy to do. If you click the link below, there's a free 30-day trial that you can get access to. It's not a watered down version, this is the full product. So yeah, simply head to the link below, grab a copy, and let's get started. We have Fusion 360 open. We've got a SOLIDWORKS migration folder set up already, and we've got the SOLIDWORKS files on my desktop ready to go. So the first step is we need to get access to those and upload them to Fusion so we can bring them into the workspace. So we'll select upload. We can either drag or drop files or select them from here. I'm going to select them in this instance. It's my desktop and pull off the files. Now, this was a download from GrabCAD. I've not made this. It is a simple engine stand, so we'll just add First, the overall assembly, as in the top level assembly, that's what Fusion needs to start the process. It's now asking for the required reference parts and sub-assemblies. So we'll select those other files from the desktop, bring them in like so. We can do this in multiple times, so if you've got files in different locations, not really a problem. Okay, we've got everything we need now for this assembly. I'll just hit upload, and that will start the translation and migration process for me. It should look something like this. Excellent, that upload is now complete. So what does it look like when we bring it in? Easy to find out, we can just double click it. So by double clicking that, we've now got the assembly in our workspace. One limitation that I should mention is that if you're previously using something like SOLIDWORKS PDM or Autodesk Vault or another kind of data management solution with SOLIDWORKS, the history that you get with revisions and life cycles and all of that will not be transferred into Fusion. What you will get though is as soon as you start using it in Fusion, you'll get version history uses and used in and also any reference drawings. If you want to look at more enhanced data management with Fusion, it's all very possible. You just need to use Fusion Manage. So we've got the assembly inside of Fusion now and this is all usable geometry that we can work with. It's actually put it kind of upside down, you can see the shadows in the incorrect position. That is very easily rectified. We just go to the view cube, set the current view as top 
and the shadows are now in the correct orientation. We've also got the feature tree here with all the original part names and assemblies. We can isolate these, hide them, edit them individually, activate them. What we can't do is see original sketches or original um, SolidWorks specific features that were used to create these parts. For example, this member here was probably created with a square sketch offset by a few mil again and then extruded out with a long a given length. Now I can't edit that individual part and then see you know, the, the original extrusion. That is not a limitation of fusion, that is a limitation of any CAD software. If you bring in one piece of data from one software to another, it's not going to know what existing features were used to build up or create that part. What we can do is we've still got selectable faces, edges, you know, this is a solid we can work with. I could uh, create a new sketch here, possibly project the face. We can start sketching things on it. Could be a hole, could be anything. And then, you know, start to use that. So easy as that. We're editing SolidWorks data with Infusion. This is essentially as if I've almost modeled it in Fusion now. Yeah, it's as easy as that to bring in data from SolidWorks and start using it with Infusion. You'll be able to take your SolidWorks file straight away after migration and start putting toolpaths on it, simulating that and hopefully making some swarf. If this still sounds daunting, perhaps you're quite integrated with SolidWorks PDM and actually have a data management kind of set up in place. Again, don't worry, give us a call, we can help with that. Fusion's got the ability to work with Fusion Manage and Teams, we can help you do that process. Perhaps you're not a SolidWorks user and you've got another CAD platform, again, don't worry. Fusion is really not picky when it comes to interoperability with other CAD formats. It will pretty much take in anything and work with it some way or another. Another thing I really like about Fusion is that you are constantly getting the very latest and greatest functionality. With other CAD platforms like SolidWorks, you might have to wait a whole year before those new things make it to the release that you've got. Plus, you've then got to install the new software and migrate all your data, yada yada. It takes a lot of time. One of the major things we get asked with people that are migrating from SolidWorks to Fusion is, how do I learn this new CAD software? What are the differences in the modeling? There are differences and, you know, it is gonna be a bit of a learning curve with that, but be rest assured, the interface in Fusion is incredibly user-friendly. It's very uh, customizable. You only really see the tools you need to see for the task you're doing. Again, the main thing to remember with both of these softwares is that if we're actually comparing 3D modeling capabilities, they're pretty much the same. It is like driving one brand of car to another. They're both gonna get you in the same direction. Some of the buttons might be in a slightly different place, but their capabilities are more or less the same in that respect. So that's quite important to, to note, really. So getting up to speed with it, if you're a SOLIDWORKS user, you will probably be able to pick it up relatively easily. They're both parametric modeling tools. They both are sketch-based and parameter-driven. Very, very similar kind of workflows, really. So it's not gonna be an alien process to you if you are coming across to this environment. So online, there is a fantastic and very helpful Autodesk Fusion community. Tons of helpful videos, how-to things. By all means, check that out. However, you know, you can also pick up some bad habits. What I would say is we would always recommend our Autodesk accredited Fusion training. Really comprehensive course. Again, we can bespoke this as well if you are a really experienced SolidWorks user, so you're not kind of going over all the, the basics that someone that's maybe very new to CAD would be. So yeah, pick up the phone, call us, check our website for information on that course. It'll get you up and running with Fusion in no time. We've also got specific courses for the cam side as well. So if you're just wanting to look at the milling or turning side of things, we've got you covered. So that was a really brief overview between the two platforms and how that migration from SolidWorks to Fusion can work. Again, you've probably got a lot of questions. We want to hear from you. By all means, please do contact us. Either call us, you know, hit the links below, comment, we'll get back to you. The, the journey from one to the other is really not as daunting as it seems. So yeah, let us know and we'll help you out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.